हेलो एंड वेलकम टू स्लेट एंड पेंसिल स्लेट एंड पेंसिल इज एन इनिशिएटिव ऑफ संस्कार भारती पब्लिक स्कूल इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट क्लास सेवन जियोग्राफी चैप्टर थ्री एंड दैट इज आवर चेंजिंग अर्थ दिस वीडियो लेक्चर इज डिवाइडेड इन टू डिफरेंट सब टॉपिक्स इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गो टू ए स्पेसिफिक वन चेक द लिंक्स इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बिलो टॉपिक कवर्स इन दिस वीडियो विल बी अर्थ्स मूवमेंट एंड रिजल्टेंट लैंडफॉर्म्स हाउ अर्थ क्विक्स अकर हाउ वोल कैनोज इरप्ट मेजर लैंड फॉर्म्स स्टूडेंट्स वी हैव ऑल्सो डिस्कस्ड सम चैप्टर्स ऑफ क्लास सेवन जियोग्राफी इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गो टू दैट वीडियोज यू कैन चेक द लिंक्स इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बिलो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग दिस चैप्टर वी वुड लाइक टू अंडरस्टैंड द लेयर्स ऑफ द अर्थ देर आर थ्री बेसिक लेयर्स ऑफ द अर्थ दैट इज कोर मेंटल एंड क्रस्ट कोर इज द इनर मोस्ट लेयर ऑफ द अर्थ एंड इट इज हॉट एंड सॉलिड whereas mantle is the middle or second layer of the earth it is in molten state crust is the third or uppermost layer of the earth and that is where we live it is lighter and it floats on the mantle the earth surface is changing continuously even when you are watching this video the earth surface is changing somewhere earth's mantle is a region where heat is circulated and distributed intense energy is produced and due to this earth's crust floats on the molten mantle it is also lighter in weight it this creates movement in the earth's surface some scientists believe millions of years ago the seven continents which are also known as lithospheric plates are broken down from a large mass of land the map that we see today is actually broken down from a large land mass and that is pangaea Pangaea is a Greek word and which means all earth. Lithospheric plates move slowly and they move about a millimeter each year. That's why you cannot feel it. Let's discuss more about the magma. Molten magma and other forces active inside the earth causes several changes. It can be sudden changes or gradual changes. Forces that affect the earth's crust are divided into two categories. endogenic forces and exogenic forces now let us discuss more about endogenic forces and exogenic forces endogenic forces are those forces which acts beneath the earth surface they can be slow or gradual and quick or sudden slow and gradual forces acts in the formation of mountain whereas quick and sudden endogenic forces causes earthquake and volcano on the other hand exogenic forces acts on the earth surface wind water and air are the forces which are exogenic in nature they modify the face of the earth now we will discuss about volcano volcano is a word derived from a latin word volcanus which means roman god of fire volcano is a vent or opening in the earth's surface it connects mantle with crust that's why molten magma comes out from this opening and we know that is called lava such volcanoes are also called active volcanoes here is a diagram of a volcano now we will discuss two words which are crater and vent crater is a funnel shaped basin surrounding the vent whereas vent is the opening in the earth's crust through which molten magma or molten material erupts what is an earthquake movement in the lithospheric plates causes vibrations and that vibration is earthquake any sudden movement on the earth's crust due to a natural cause is an earthquake vibration travels in the form of waves here is a diagram showing different types of waves of earthquake p waves or longitudinal waves which is shown in the diagram as a s waves or transverse waves that is shown as b and l waves or surface waves that is shown in the c l waves or surface waves are the combination of longitudinal waves and transverse waves that is p and s waves now we will discuss more about the earthquake the place in the crust where the movement starts is known as focus and place above the focus is the epicenter if you are nearest to the epicenter 
you will receive more damage that is chances of damage is highest closest to the epicenter earthquake is measured by seismograph magnitude of the earthquake is measured by richter scale here is a diagram of the seismograph let's see focus and epicenter as you can see clearly in this diagram epicenter is just above the focus next diagram is of richter scale and this shows the magnitude or intensity of the earthquake this is also color coded now we will discuss about landforms created by erosion and weathering but before moving into this video why don't give a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you are new here we post similar videos every week landscapes are continuously worn away by two processes and that are weathering and erosion face of the earth is changing continuously by these processes process of weathering and erosion creates different landforms on the earth now discuss about weathering and erosion in detail weathering is the breakdown of the rocks on the earth surface by atmospheric agents they can be temperature moisture etc whereas erosion is wearing away of the landscape by different agents like water wind etc it includes transportation of the eroded material by wind and water landforms created by different geomorphic agents river river is the most important geomorphic agent it creates number of erosional and depositional landforms some of the erosional landforms created by the river are waterfall and meanders waterfalls are vertical drop of water of enormous volume from a great height whereas meanders are twist and turns by the river when the river enters the plain area it twist and turns forming large bends known as meanders this twists and turns are result of irregularities of ground river generally forms a snake like pattern when flowing across a valley floor the erosion and deposition of the sediment constantly along the side of a meander thereby causing end of its loop to come closer and closer with the passage of time the loop cuts off from the river and forms a oxbow lake now we will discuss about depositional landforms by river delta river deposit fine sediments near the mouth when it meets sea or ocean since river become very slow it begins to deposit its load near its mouth and that forms a plain fertile land that is delta it is mainly triangular in the shape you may have heard about sundarban delta that is an example of depositional landforms by river now we will discuss about levees the raised banks are called levees these are formed due to deposition of the sediments during the flood what is a flood plain flood plain is also an example of depositional landforms when river carry large amount of fine soil and silt during a overflow or a flood these sediments get deposited in the plain area that forms a fertile flat land and that flat land is known as flood plains they are really very fertile now we will discuss about the work of sea waves erosional and depositional work of the sea waves gives birth to a variety of coastal landforms erosional landforms by sea waves they are sea caves sea arc stack and sea cliff what is a sea caves these are formed due to gradual erosion of weak and strongly jointed rocks by sea waves sea waves continuously strike at the rocks developing crack in the rocks when the cavity become bigger and bigger only the roof of the cave remains thus forming a sea arc in simple words when we can see through the rock or cavity it is known as arc stack the erosion is continuous and gradual process with the passage of time erosion will lead to total collapse of arc rooftop of rock and only walls are left these wall like structures are called stacks sea cliff the steep rocky coast rising almost vertically above the sea water is called sea cliff let's discuss about the depositional landforms by sea waves beaches broken sediments of the rocks are deposited by the sea waves near the shore forming a beach 
let's discuss more about the formation of the landforms in the form of ice here we will discuss work of an ice glaciers are river of ice or frozen rivers which too erodes the landscape the glaciers generally gives birth to erosional landforms in the highlands while the depositional landforms in the lowland areas the deposition of big and small rocks silt etc by glacier is known as glacial moraines now we will discuss about work of wind wind is also an important geomorphic agent of erosion but it is not as much effective as river or sea waves wind works as an active erosional agent in the desert areas thanks for watching this video if you are new here consider subscribing and also share it with your friends